Hi folks, I'm Dave. And I'm Ben. And we are back again for another Fuse tutorial video. And this time, actually, we were looking on the Fuse Arena forum page and, you know, shameless plug, if you are not already on that page, I strongly recommend that you go on there because it is looking more awesome by the day. We've got people making yeah. some really, really cool projects, sharing things that I don't know about at all. It's been so awesome and educational. I really strongly recommend that you have a look. Now, we've been listening to your comments, and I do want to say, just first of all, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the positive feedback. It really actually just means the world to us, and it is going to keep pushing us to do these videos. We're so glad that you're enjoying them, and uh, yeah, we can't wait to keep doing them. So uh, on to the actual content of the video, rather than just, you know, talking just nonsense. Like we could do for a very long time. We really could make this a very long video and cover basically no ground. Yeah, yeah it's very possible. <laughs> but I think people might not like them as much if we do that. I, I, I'm not sure. Well, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> if you want these videos to be much longer and less informative, just leave a comment <laughs> telling us so we can do our best. Right. We have been looking at the comments on the Fuse Arena, and it seems as though people are looking for a tutorial on arrays. And uh, certainly that that would be quite helpful for people. And I've been very eager to, to cover this topic, this concept, because it really is one of the main sort of first, you know, you get... You have to do loops, you have to understand your variables and your if statements. It's got to be three, this is one of the first, like, of the next steps. That's very nicely put, yeah. yeah. It's not sort of a part of the big three. You can get a lot done with just, you know, yeah. with just yeah. loops, variables, and if statements. For example, the game Pong, you know, simple games like that. You can, you can do that without using a single array, no problem. However, if you want to step up your programming a little bit, and you want to make some more impressive things happen. Maybe you want to start looking at creating um, a, like a multiplayer sort of thing, or you want something to happen with lots of things on screen at the same time. Let's say that you want you know, lots of different enemies to be on screen, or you want all these different things to avoid. You're going to need to look at arrays. So, what is an array? Well, we, in this video, want to cover the simple version of an array. You know, like all things in coding, even the simple things can actually get pretty complicated down the line in terms of their applications. But we are going to look at the simplest sort of type of an array, a nice and practical, simple, uh, simple application, and a silly program at the end, like we always do, for just, you know, something to make the point clear and also hopefully make some people laugh in the process. Um, we will also touch upon some more advanced stuff, but we're not going to look at that in this video. In future videos, we'll be covering more advanced arrays and data types. This is just for the beginners in terms of you don't even know what an array is. Okay, with that said and done, I have this analogy that I like to use when I'm talking about arrays. And you're going to have to bear with me here because, you know, I can say something like, well, an array is a table of variables. It's a table of values. And that might be all you need. You know, if you're familiar with maths, if you have used Excel, perhaps quite a bit, Microsoft Excel, if you've made spreadsheets, if you are quite familiar with, you know, making tables in maths, you're not going to have a problem picturing that sort of a thing, a table of values. But if this is your first time and maybe you're you know, you're not into that sort of thing in school yet. Um, I like to liken these things to something that we've all used or experienced. So, have you ever seen a chest of drawers? I think you probably know what I'm talking about, right? Just a bunch of drawers in a bigger sort of set of drawers. And inside each of these drawers, you can put some stuff. Now, we're not going to go into, you know, what we all have in our drawers. I know that my drawers at home, they're usually quite messy. Everyone's got one of those drawers that's just full of random miscellaneous objects. You know, you just need to find a place to put something. You just put it in a drawer. I've got about five. You've got at least. <laughs> Overflowing. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I open mine, just pens and pencils just sort of <laughs> burst out. There's springs and slinkies <laughs> and all, you know, I keep all my springs in there. Press them down. You have to press them all down and then slide <laughs> the drawer in. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, yes. No, so, is it not? No, that's what I do. Okay, fair enough. You know, eat to each their own. Eh? But I think that's, that is a recipe for chaos. So uh, keep your miscellaneous drawers well organised for an easy life. And already we are well off track. So. <laughs> Good let's, let, let's bring it back. Um, right, a chest of drawers. Now, you've already seen in our previous videos what we do with variables, and we um, you know, made the analogy of a box. So here's an example, Ben's going to refresh your memory. We've got the value zero, and we are storing that value in a box, 
a little theoretical, you know, imaginary box, and we are labeling that box with the word example, and now that is our variable. But what if we wanted to store a bunch of different things, tons of different things, but all kind of under the same umbrella, if you like. So here's an example here, Ben's got example two. Three guesses what he's gonna do next. Example, if you put four now, I will, five. I wasn't ready for that. Example five. You might have example two, three, four, five, six, all these different separate variables, and your program is going to get quite messy quite quickly because you're going to need to check all of these different variables against different things and you will quickly realize, hang on, this just is not viable. Now this is where arrays come in. An array is like your box, except it's a box of boxes. It's a chest of drawers. And each of those drawers has a value, has a number. And we refer to this number as the index. This is your index into your array, your chest of drawers. So you might have, for example, you know, in your clothes drawer, you might have your socks, your t-shirts, your trousers, and then, you know, all the things that you can't find a place for in your house, or they're, they're just in the bottom drawer. I thought we weren't going to be talking about what we've got. Ah, oh, well, I, I, everyone's got socks in a drawer, right? No one keeps socks in anything but a drawer. And if you do, you're doing it wrong. Simple as that. But I was just saying that then, so I could say, you know, my top drawer is the socks drawer, so that's my zero drawer. Why Each one's put, got a number. Why, your, why do you put your socks in the top? <laughs> you put me on the spot here, Ben. Um, why do I put socks in the top drawer? It's because... Um, <laughs> there's no good reason for that, Ben. Do you know what? There just isn't a good reason. It's, it's tradition. I've been doing that now for over... 38,000 years, and I'm not about to to stop doing that, you know? It's 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 how I live my life, Ben. I'm going to go around your house and I'm going to switch over. No, you're not. I won't let you. You won't even find you, the you don't, you don't even have to let me. Well, I, I'm... That's a plan, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't. Um, uh, please keep my drawers in order. But we are going again. Tell you off track. Now, <laughs> um, I think it's going to be best if we just show you how to create an array. And because Fuse is very flexible and it allows you to do things in a ton of different ways, there are lots of different ways to declare an array. I mean, when you're making a variable, there's only one way. You just say variable name equals this. But in Fuse with arrays, there are a few different ways. Now we're going to show you one way, and then I'm gonna show you a slightly different way, and then a different way, and you can make your mind up as to what you like the best. Uh, but it's very, very visual in the way that we're going to get started. So instead of saying example equals zero, what we're going to say instead is example equals open square bracket. And we have talked about the different brackets in Fuse before. When we've talked about functions, we've only mentioned round brackets. I think we might have briefly mentioned that we use square and curly brackets for different things. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't specify. We didn't specify because we didn't um, want to scare yeah. anybody away, I don't think. But I'm just trying to think if we've even mentioned like what you know, like is on. I don't game. think we did. I don't no, think we did. But the handy thing is in yeah. in Fuse, everything's quite consistent. So square brackets are always, always, without a doubt, talking about arrays. If you see a square bracket in some code, then you know you are looking at something to do with an array. You may be an array index. Maybe you're accessing this array. <clears throat> and in fact, actually, what Ben's just done there is enough. Example equals open square bracket, close square bracket. What you've just done there is you've said, give me an empty array. So this is actually a, new chest of drawers. It's a new, brand new chest of drawers. But the cool thing about this and how it is on infused, it's going to be very, very difficult to map this analogy onto the chest of drawers. <laughs> but it's almost like you've made a potentially infinite chest of drawers. You've made an empty chest Imagine of drawers. That. And you, we could now keep adding drawers to it. We could just keep going, keep going, keep going. This is something called dynamic arrays. You can say, here's just an empty array. And then later on in your code, you can put things wherever you want. Now, don't worry if that's a bit confusing. I'm going to maybe clear some things up. Ben, can you just put a few values into this array? Maybe just a few numbers um, or a few words. In fact, let's put our names in there. Let's put our names in there. Why not? We'll have Dave. We'll have Ben. We might as well have Cap. And maybe Luke as well, because they're in the other room. You might as well involve them in some in some way. Um, so <clears throat> you might, what, you know, what you should notice here is that Ben is putting these bits of data separated by commas. And the commas are the important part. That tells us this is the first element of the array. 
And that element is really just the word I'm using, and that, that is the, the correct term for each chest, sorry, each drawer in your chest of drawers. So we've got the Dave drawer, the Ben drawer, the Cat drawer, the Luke drawer. And each of those drawers has a number. Now, because computers always start counting at zero, the first drawer that contains the name Dave is the zero drawer. And we could actually access this um, with an easy print statement. Can we do that, Ben? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just do that. <clears throat> if, we, if we're going to print what is contained in the first drawer in our chest of drawers, in our array. Uh, so we've got the print. And instead of having any speech marks in here, because the speech marks are already in the string that is in our array, you know, we've already got the speech marks around the word Dave. We don't need speech marks here. All we need is to put the name of our array, so print example, and then in square brackets, we need to put the index into the array that gets us what we want. So I want the first thing, that is the zero position, the zero element, the zero draw. Hopefully because, this is starting to Because computers sense. always start counting from zero. From zero. I mean, never, you know, never, uh, never, 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 otherwise, unless you specify. So, you know, yeah. but we're going to get to some, some stuff like that a bit later. So this will say, find the first element in an array called example. And then Fuse will look for that array and it's going to say, okay, what's this example thing? Oh, here it is. And it begins here. And the first element looks like it is the word Dave. So I'm just going to print that. Should we see if it works? We'll need an update and a sleep, of course. Yeah. We'll need an update and a sleep. Yeah, you'll get used to that one. I think we'll sleep for just one second. That should do it. And with any luck, we should get the word Dave on the screen right there. Three, two, one. Well, there it is. Yeah. Went a bit yeah, before yeah. the countdown. I, I should have told you I was going to count yeah. down. But Start it, counting up, I pressed, pressed it. it. <laughs> I <think> it <laughs> Just go really, really quickly. Um, okay, so Ben, if I wanted to get Cat's name on the screen, what would I put in there? Exactly. So it's zero, one, two, which is actually the third element of the array, and that's going to access the name Cat. Now, you can put anything into this array. You could start, you could change these values. It doesn't have to all be, you know, strings with speech marks. One of them could be a number. It could be anything. It could even be a reference to another array. You can start mixing it up that way. Also, <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. Oh, that's probably... The best part about that is that comes before Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's daft. That's actually genuinely very funny. Right, so Ben, what I want to get across here, um, actually, are you Ben or are you also Ben? <laughs> I'm going to go with Ben. Right. All right, cool. I'm, I'm cool with that one. Now, what you can see is our array here is all on the one line. And this is very, very helpful for picturing what is going on when you have a nice small array. Now, Thing is, is that we tend to use arrays to store lots of data. You know, you might have um, all of your enemies in a game stored in a big array. And you might have 200 enemies on screen, and each of those might have uh, bullets in different directions, and might have different stages of their health, or be different enemy types. All of that information is going to be in an array, and that array is going to be quite large. Now, if that entire thing was written on one line, <clears throat> then you might start to run into some readability issues. I mean, it's just not going to help anyone. Now, because Fuse is super flexible and it allows you to format your code however you want, as long as all the syntax is correct, and doesn't care if things are on one line, multiple lines, whatever, you can actually do something like this. So if we, sorry, but I'm just taking the keyboard <laughs> off you there. You know what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know me. So what we can do is, and you will be seeing this in the Fuse tutorials quite a lot. I do believe actually that pretty much all of the arrays, apart from the, you know, the initial explanation, um, format the arrays like this. And you'll see this sort of a setup. And this can be, you know, if you're not experienced with arrays or with computing or with coding even, that can actually be quite a complex looking thing. You know, and I wouldn't blame you at all for thinking that. You know, it took me actually, I'm going to own up here, it took me quite a long time to understand what an array even is and why it, it is even a thing. Um, I, I think that that's something that isn't really talked about enough in learning computer science. Is it's all well and good saying, oh, here's the explanation of the concept. Yeah. But if you can't see the application or how it's practical, then it's it's nothing. You know, it can be. It's very very hard to actually realize. Well, what? Why would I want to do that? So hopefully this will give you some, um, you know, some something to go on there as well. I think it's a really important thing to mention. 
So it's exactly the same as before when it was all on one line. It's no different, except it just looks a little bit clearer. I mean, you can imagine if we had 50 things in this array, it's going to be much, much clearer to have them all nice and separate. And you can see that the commas are there at the end of each element. They separate them all nicely. We have our first open bracket. And after that, we are tabbing in, tabbing in. Yeah, this way. Right. Yes. Over there. Yes. Tabbing this way. And the reason we do that is for the same that we, you know, tab inside of an if statement or inside a for loop. It's just so we can see very, very clearly what is in what. And then we have our closing square bracket to denote that this is the end of the array and we are now returning back to the normal program flow. You know, now we're just on the beginning of the lines. We're not inside an if statement or an array or, 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 or anything like that. Speaking of this, if statements, yes. Right? Um, this is structured very similar to the way we've done if statements and yes. loops. It is, yeah, and, and loops as well. You, know, you will see this sort of indentation style within loops. You'll have loop, indent, repeat at the bottom. And um, we use this all over the place. And it is, a, I'm going to stress it again, it's up to you. If you do not find it easier to see things like this, don't do it. You know, find the formatting style that works for you. At the end of the day, people don't mark. I mean, <laughs> people aren't going to, 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 to judge your creations based on how you have formatted your code. If you've made something incredible happen, you've got some complex maths going on, you've done something really impressive, no one's going to say, yeah, but you didn't format it correctly. You know, Maybe that will matter if you're doing a computer science course. Ben, you can tell me if I mean, the formatting tends to matter. I mean, in certain languages, yeah. it is mandatory, obviously. Yeah, and yeah. the uh, program, the, 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 I need to slow down. The programming language, language. that I use yes. um, does, the formatting does matter. It really does, doesn't it? I mean, yes. in Python, if you yeah. get a an indentation wrong, yeah. that's an error. You know? So if I was to put that, like that. One space, and you've ruined everything. Yes. Thankfully, Fuse doesn't care in the least about spaces. How nice is that? We can just sort of keep going and not worry about these little tiny mistakes. But it does make a difference to readability. As I've said a billion times, it's up to you. Let's move on. <laughs> so hopefully you understand what we've got here. Now, I want to show you a different way of declaring this exact same array, just so that you know it's possible. Ben, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to take the keyboard for a second. Yep, um, so I've got it in my head, we're clear. What I can do is I can actually use the keyword array. And if I put array, I'm saying I'm declaring an array. And here's what it is, and I'm going to call it names. And I want there to be four names in this array. So, oh, I've got the caps lock on there. There we go, that's better. Now, here I'm saying, give me an array called names, and I want it to have four elements, four empty drawers. And that's exactly the same. However, I now need to populate that array with some stuff. So I can do this. I can say names zero equals Dave, then. Then I can say names one equals Dave again. <laughs> names two equals, B no, sorry, Dave. <laughs> right, so you get the picture. This is exactly the same. You only and you do can, it twice. Hey? You only do your name twice. What do you mean? Three, three is too much. Oh, you, I, 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 I like to push the boat out. You know, I'm, a, I'm an artist, so I, you know, I'm expanding the boundaries. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm certainly expanding the boundaries of what counts as actual speech as, as talking, because I really am just talking nonsense. Now, let's get back to the point here, okay? It doesn't matter which of these methods you choose. However, different methods tend to be better suited for different jobs. Yeah. You know, if you know that you're going to, so for example, in this, in our example array, where you've got also Ben, Ben, Cat, and Luke, because we are going to actually specify each name, we might as well format it like this, where we actually write it out because it's actually less typing, you know? If I declare it in the way that we have at the top here, I've got to type out names, zero equals names, one equals names. So that might get a bit annoying when actually this will work exactly the same. So you've got simple arrays, um, accessing them, printing what's inside them, sort of finding the values. It's a chest of drawers. Each drawer has a number. Let's see an example of an array in action to make a little sort of game project. And I'm going to get Ben to go to one that we created earlier in, uh, you know, traditional uh, video style. 
and I'll just sort of say a bit about what it is. Um, we decided, in fact, actually, this is a project that you can find in the Fuse tutorials. Um, it's a favorite of mine just because it's a really nice and easy way to have a lot of fun with a project whilst actually still using a fairly advanced concept like an array. Um, and I've seen a lot of people have a lot of fun with this. Now, what you're going to see here, you should expand on. If you're going to make your own fortune teller program, which is what we're making here, or like a magic eight ball, I'm not sure if you've ever used one of those, something where you ask a question and you get an answer. And I'm going to just put a disclaimer here then, because I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'll be worried otherwise. This fortune teller is random. Now, that means it is just a randomly decided answer that you get. Of course, it should go without saying, there is no truth to the answer that you're going to get. Even if it coincidentally... No, that's not. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping you wouldn't say it. Even if coincidentally you do get the right answer, of course, it means nothing. It's meaningless. It's just for a bit of fun. Don't base any major life decisions on this project. <laughs> okay, with that said and done, let's talk a little bit about what we have here. Ben, can you go up to the very top of our program? Yes. So we've got an array exactly as you've just seen before. This one is called Answer. And inside it, we've stored five potential different answers that you could get from a fortune teller or a magic eight ball. Um, so we've got yes, no. Maybe, 100%, and it's not looking good. Now, I would encourage you to add a bunch of these to your own array and make them as long and as silly as possible. And um, We've had some really, really funny different examples of projects. In fact, somebody that I was once teaching at a Fuse workshop took this project and did something I've never seen before. They took this Magic 8 Ball project, and instead of having like, yes, definitely, it is certain, maybe, perhaps not, they changed them all to be like stock granny lines and he made a grandma simulator, a grandmother simulator. So you ask the grandmother a question and she says something like, your soup's getting cold, you know, go and eat your dinner or something. Or like, come and give your grandma a kiss. And it was very, very funny. This lad actually who made it, he was only about nine years old, and he had us all in stitches. So it's not just for fortune telling. You really can make this do um, yeah, a bunch of other things. Adapt it, experiment with it, try out what you like. Uh, so there's our array. We've got answer zero, one, two, three, and four, making for a total of five elements. And then we've got the beginnings of our loop. Now for our fortune teller to work, we want it to say, ask me anything, you know, ask me a question, give me something. And of course, because we, we are using sleep commands in this program um, to sort of ramp up the tension, because we don't want it to just like really, really quickly go through and then just say, you know, ask me a question. OK, here's your answer. Fine. <laughs> That's not fun, right? We want it to be like, ask me a question. And then you say something and it goes, ooh, I'm thinking. The answer is, oh, you're not going to like it. No. Are you ready? Are you ready for the answer? It's no. Right? We like the tension. It just makes it silly. It makes it more fun to play. Um, so we are using sleep commands and updates after each print to make sure that we get a bit of time to read as well. It's also quite important. And you'll be noticing that we've got the backslash N in our print lines. So we're starting a new line each time. Um, so first of all, we print ask me anything. Next, we use the input function to store a question. Now, really, it doesn't matter what the question is. We don't really care what, what they ask. It can be anything. We're not even going to refer back to it. We're not going to say, you asked this. We're not going to change our answers depending on their question. Of course, that is something that you could do, but it's a lot more advanced. And if you know how, you should adapt this project and make it as cool as possible. But for now, just keeping it simple, we're just using the input to store something. So they get to type something in, they might type, am I going to be rich in two years? And then we are storing that question in our variable called question. Right, once we've got that, we print, I'm thinking, ellipses, update, sleep, we're waiting. We print, are you ready? We're ramping up the tension. We sleep again, we're waiting for the answer. And here is the magical part. This is where we access the array. Now. I know what you're thinking. If this is your first time ever um, using arrays or things like that, or if you're quite new to programming, this sort of a line is going to just immediately look a bit weird because we've got one, two, three, four pairs of brackets. Is that right? One, two, three, four pairs yeah. of brackets, yes. So what's going on here? Well, we want to might print. actually be a bit easier if we do this, maybe. 
We'll just try it out. I've thought about that yeah. before, you know, Ben. I've actually thought about splitting them up. I tend to avoid it because, well, when you tab something, it is a specific meaning, isn't it? Because you're, yeah. you're, you are changing the scope of the program. And I, I don't really want to go into the details of all that yet. So, it, again, though, it is a good demonstration of the fact that you really can format your code however you want. And but if that does help you... If yeah. it does, go for it, go for you it. know, without a doubt. Yeah. But, Ben, to help me, <laughs> could we uh, change it yes. back to how it was? Thank you. I found that a bit confusing. Just personally, just personally. Right, so we've got the print brackets, and the first bracket and the last bracket are for our print. And inside that, we are printing our answer. Now, we want to print a random one of our answers in our array. So what we need to do is write answer. That's the name of our array. And just as you saw before in the example program, how we were writing like uh, names zero, names one, names two for our index, we want a random index. Now, we've got five answers, so we could put random five. We could put random five. In fact, that would be absolutely fine. And that's exactly right, Ben. It would just be there. Uh, yeah, and the brackets are all correct. We just want to choose a random number out of five and use that as the index for which answer we want. However, what if you wanted to add a bunch of different answers to that array? Let's say that you have had a big moment of creativity and you added 216 answers into that array. Specifically 216. 216 yeah. answers. This wouldn't work for um, 215 or okay. 270. Not at all. It only works for 216. <laughs> Actually, that is not true, that is it? <laughs> no, this would work, but so the reason I said 216 <laughs> is because for any amount that you want to add, this is a very, very helpful technique. Or so, if you want to take some away. But it, yeah, that's a really good point too. If you wanted to get rid of a bunch of your different answers, then you want to use this technique, and it's a function called len. And all it does is it returns the length of an array. So if you give the name of an array to your len function, it will just give you a number. And we have an array length of five, because we have zero, one, two, three, four, total of five elements. So really that just says random five. But if I go and add 216 different answers to my array, that now says 221. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 216 add five is in fact 221. So it means that we don't then have to touch this line of code later. It just sort of does it for us. Very, very helpful. <laughs> After we print the answer, we're putting a backslash N in speech marks so that the next thing is on the next line. We have got a little bit of a longer sleep there so that we get, you know, just a bit longer to read the answer. And then, uh, Ben, I can't see what's underneath that. Okay, yeah, let's play again. So it then prints the words, let's play again. We wait for a second and we repeat the loop going all the way back to the start. We clear the screen and we are now playing again, writing a new question, and that is our game. Ben, I've just remembered. Can we put the text size a bit higher? Yes, I think that the, for the viewers, well, that one and also as a text size function yes. in the code. So outside of the loop, yeah, because we don't need it to happen every single frame. Um, do you remember what was good for the biscuits? Was it like 80? Uh, I yeah, want to say it was like 80. That. I've got a feeling it was 80. Should we give this a go? Yeah. Cool, that's better. Ask me anything. Okay, Ben. Let's get down to business here. Am I, is Dave, the best moth player in a five mile radius? <laughs> Let's hope. Well, I could get in a bad answer here. So obviously, a bit of a shout out to my uh, to my main character, Marth. Love Smash Brothers, and um, hopefully you recognise that name. So let's ask: Am I the best Marth player in a five mile radius? Well, are you ready? I don't know if I am. Yes, a hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. Now I did say, don't base any of your life decisions. <laughs> and look, I've already failed. It is quite compelling, right, Ben? Let's ask. Uh, let's ask you. You tell me a question to ask about you. Uh, is is Ben Ben the best? Is Ben <laughs> is Ben the best? What's your forte? Probably Mario. Kart. You're pretty good at Mario Kart, yeah. aren't you? Is Ben the best Mario Kart player in? The land. Let's let's see what we get. Are you ready, Ben? No. Yes. I am. 
that sounds about right. So, you know, when you so, ask it a question where it can give you the truth, it will give you the truth. <laughs> no, of course, I'm going to say it again. It's just a silly program, but I really do encourage you. But this is pretty impressive. I don't think we've ever had it. The Actually, exact right answer it exactly yeah. correct yeah. both times. And thank you, Ben, for saying that that was correct before. Although five mile radius, it's not very big. No. So I'm not sure how many of the mouth players there are in a five mile radius. But, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Right, let's go back to uh, the code here. I'm just going to, oh, there we go. And um, I've got the wrong Joy-Con here to get rid of the keyboard. So you've got here a nice template to create your own Magic 8 All slash Fortune Teller. We might be in the way of the lower... I think we probably screen. are. But, I mean, hopefully start. you can pause the video. And as I said before, this project is in the Fuse Tutorial Help Project. So you can always go in there and just copy and paste the entire thing into a new code file and then just change the text if that's what you want to do. It will save you a lot of typing. Now, a couple of things I want to say before we wrap this video up, and that is we have only covered the basics of arrays here. Of course, if we're going to go into more complicated versions of arrays, then the videos are going to get longer, so we're going to split it up and maybe address it in a different video. What we have covered today is something called a single dimension array. It's a linear array. We just have one dimension. We've got yes, no, maybe, 100%. Now, there are such things as... You can't just do all of them except for the last. And it's not can... looking good. Fine, you're right. Okay, you, yes, you no, can do like maybe one or two. Maybe 100%, it's not looking good. You're right, I have to be committed. <laughs> but it's fair enough, it, that is a fair comment. You're right, you're right, it's mean to leave out the one. Poor old last element. Um, although it's, it's not looking good for the last <laughs> element. Yeah. Okay, so this is just a single dimension array. And what I mean by that is just an array of linear values. You can have multi-dimensional arrays where each of the array elements is itself another array. And then you might have arrays within that and arrays within that. In fact, actually, there's, there's no end to this. You can have arrays within arrays within arrays within arrays within arrays. Sounds like I'm saying raisin. <laughs> arrays within a raisin. A raisin. <laughs> so, a raisin with a raisin. A raisin with a raisin. Yeah, good. That, that's almost exactly the same sentence at this point. <laughs> so, as I said, we're not going to go into too much detail about multidimensional arrays yet because they are just a bit more complicated to picture. However, they are in the Fuse tutorials, and I do recommend that you have a read through in preparation for the upcoming videos. Um, but, but we didn't want this video to go on for too long, and they really, really will if we start looking at all the different complex, different versions of arrays. Now, Hopefully, I think we've covered everything here. I do want to say before we leave, head over to FuseArena.com. More and more now, it is looking like the place to be. It is really awesome. Yeah. People are making some projects that are just blowing our minds every day. Um, every single day, there's just a new awesome thing on there to look at. It's really, really cool. People are learning from each other, and it is really looking like what we want it to be. So I'm super happy about this, um, as you can probably tell. And yeah, it is the place to be. Check it out. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It will obviously keep all these videos coming and will make them better and better. Um, ben, anything you want to say there? If I... No, I think you've got everything We there. think we've covered everything yeah. there? Okay, exactly. well, I hope to see you again next time. We're going to look at a special type of loop next time. And then also we'll try and get some more complex array stuff in there as well because these special loops really do tie into arrays in a big way. You probably already know what I'm talking about. They are called for loops. If you want to look up anything already, there is a good few tutorial on for loops, so maybe do some preparation for the next video. Um, I've been Dave. And I've been Ben. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Cool. That felt good. Yeah, man. I think that was all right. Possibly still a bit too long. Maybe, but I mean...